So good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, joining. So as a quick fun fact about myself is that I like to cook dishes like this, but I don't necessarily look up a recipe and follow that step by step. What I like to do is find some inspiration online and try to make that dish and get as close as possible. Of course, I do want to make sure that if I enjoy that dish, I'm able to repeat that when cooking for family and for friends. So reusability is the number one thing we'll talk about in this session as well. So if you are designing your declarative infrastructure as code templates, reusability is the number one thing to think about. And that's what we'll do in this session as well. So the goal of this session is to allow you to optimize for your infrastructure as code templates to be able to reuse them using the concept of modules to be able to build ones and deploy anywhere. My name is Fake Berson. I'm based in the Netherlands. I'm a Microsoft MVP and a published author, and I enjoy sharing knowledge about Azure Infrastructure as Code to help you deploy resources in Azure in a more fast and more efficient way. So let's dive right in. So before we do the live demo, just a quick recap on what BICEP is. It's all about the BICEP template that you start to create. This is where you declare the resources you want to deploy in Azure. You then feed that BICEP file into the ARM engine. Along the way, it will be transpiled into a JSON template and through the concept of resource providers that will lead into various resources in Azure, whether that's compute or storage or networking or Azure Virtual Desktop or Kubernetes, that doesn't really matter. Three important aspects about the BICEP language. For one, this is declarative, meaning that you basically state the end result of what you want to create, rather than having imperative code where each line of code is processed individually in a very specific order as well. With BICEP, you don't care about the ordering. And last and secondly, it's item opponent, meaning that you can deploy the same template into the scope, same scope over and over again. The result will always be the same. So there's item potency there. And lastly, it is fast. So you basically throw your BICEP file into the ARM engine and it will be deployed in the most fast and most efficient way. So if resources depend on each other, automatic depends on sections will be created. If not, they will be deployed in parallels to make it as fast as possible. So that's it. Let's dive into a demo and talk about the reusability aspect. So I have a VS Code here and actually have an empty BICEP file here just to show you how quickly it is and how easy it is to get started with declaring your resources. You simply type the keyword resource followed by a symbolic name and then followed by the type of resource you want to create. For example, a storage account. I can select an API version. I do an equal sign and I say, give me all of the required properties. I can now fill in these property names. Uh, for example, this uh, location here. Uh, and these are actually drop down lists that are coming directly from uh, the Azure as well. So there's day zero support for all of the properties, and that's it. I have now declared the first resource. I can deploy this into Azure. Of course, this is just a single resource. At this point, I will add parameters to make it more reusable. I would add additional resources, outputs, and things like that. So before you know it, you will end up with a larger BICEP file, for example, uh, like this which is over 600 lines of code, which is a lot of parameters, a lot of variables, a lot of resources I'm going to create. So a quick pro tip here is to take a look at this bicep visualizer in the upper right corner as well. If you click that, you get a visualization of all of the resources you are about to create, which is also interactive. So I can drag these around to have them in the state that I want to as my documentation, for example, uh, and revert back to the defaults as well. So really a great way to visualize that. What you will end up with is that large bytes of file. So at this point, we want to make sure that it becomes reusable. So we're going to extract piece of code and put them into separate module files. So how does that work? Three different ways. There's local modules here. Let me show you how that works. What I have here is the declaration of uh, two different things. I'm declaring a resource group here, as you can see. And by the way, I'm using this nice little um, decorator, which is quite near, which allows me to say only deploy this resource if it doesn't exist already, which is quite cool to do. But here's the declaration of a module. So I use the keyword module followed by a symbolic name and then pointing to another BICEP file. And I have a scope here, which is RG and RG basically points back to the resource group we had declared before, which basically means all the resources I want to have them deployed inside that resource group. And then along the way, I will pass these parameters. And that's it. So, of course, what you see here is that the BICEP module needs to be on my local file system, which doesn't make it ideal if I want to share that within others within my team, for example. So that's where the second concept comes in. So let me take a look at that, which is Azure Container Registries. So it's basically the same thing. 
Uh, let me zoom in again. So I have the resource group and I have the module deck relation. But as you can see, now it's no longer on my local file system. It's inside an Azure Container Registry, or short ACR. So the first question is, how does it end up there? That works like this. So I'm using the command let az bytesapp publish. I can pass it the file name, which is the bytesapp file which we just had. And I'm using br column, which stands for bytesapp registry, to point it to the ACR in Azure. I can then additionally also add documentation URIs, as well as also including the source inside that ACR, which is quite cool to do. So once you have that, let me switch back to the Azure portal. This is that uh, Azure Container Registry, and I have a couple of um, uh, repositories here. Only one of those repositories is the V1 version of that module, uh, which now allows me to share it. So if I go back to the ACR, I can go to Access Control and provide anyone who needs to have access to this module to be able to use it as well. So that's the concept of ACRs. Now, when it comes to the deck relation, it is the exact same thing. So let me show you. It still is module, it still is a symbolic name, but now I'm using BR colon, which is again stands for bicep registry, and I'm pointing to that online location with eventually the version. But the ERS is exactly the same thing. So I define the scope and I pass it these parameters. So now this bicep file is not on my local file system. I can share it with others, which is a great thing to do. And then the last concept is the concept of an Azure verified module. And this is a little bit of a special one. Let me actually show you uh, the landing page before uh, taking a look at the declaration here. This is the Azure Verified Modules landing page. And if we take a look at the left-hand side, there is bicep modules here, but also Terraform. And a lot of them uh, are there. So if I click on, for example, the resource modules, which allow me to deploy a single resource, that's a huge list of all kinds of resources here with the modules I can use. So for example, let's take a look at the Azure Compute Gallery here. Uh, and if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that we have all kinds of examples. So bicep uh, templates, the parameters, and all of the documentation is there. So switching back to VS Code, how does that declaration then work? We still use the, the keyword module, the same um, decorator here, and now we're pointing to BR forward slash public AVM and then the location. So in this case, I'm using a Microsoft module uh, I'm using that directly into my, my mindset uh, template. And again, the rest is the exact same thing. So one of the great benefits about these AVMs is that for one, these are managed and maintained by Microsoft. These are uh, based on the well-architected framework and they are secure by default. And on top of that, you also get full support on these modules. So can you reach out to Azure support in case you run into trouble with these Azure Verified modules? So that's a great thing to do. So, there's a couple of things I wanted to uh, show and that even allow you to further extend that usability uh, as well. So let's dive into those. The first one I want to show you is resource derived types. So you might be aware that as soon as you start to declare parameters, you can make them of uh, type uh, string, Boolean, integer, array, all of those default things. But did you know that you can also point to an existing resource uh, by using what's called a derived type? So in this case, I'm declaring a SKU name. I'm not giving it one of the default uh, types, but I'm now I'm pointing to an existing resource to get that type there as well. So if I scroll to the right hand side, we can see that I'm now pointing to the skew.name, which means that the parameter that I just declared is of the same type of that existing resource with that existing property. Which means that if I ho hover over these, you can also get um, you know, information about what are some of the allowed values uh, in there. So it's treated just like any other um, type definition there, which is a really great thing to do. So reusing those types is called uh, derived types. And then the last one here that I wanted to show you is uh, the export functionality and import functionality. So again, this is extending up on all of the module declaration that we've seen to allow you to do reusability, but now for your own types and for your own functions. So let me show you how that works. I have a type declaration here, so I'm saying that I want to create a new type, which is called storage account SKU type, which in my case can either be standard LRS or standard GRS. I have a second one here, which is the storage account kind, which can be V2 or regular storage. But note that I'm using another decorator here, which is at export, which basically means I'm going to allow uh, anyone who's importing this to use my own uh, type uh, definitions as well. Not only that, 
I can do the same thing for functions. So I have a custom function that I've declared here. So I'm using the keyword func. I want a function name. I'm passing it a couple of parameters. And on the right-hand side, there's the, the actual function uh, itself. But again, I'm using that export decorator here, which means that I can export it to other bicep files. So how does that work? Let me open up any other bicep file and show you the import statement uh, for those uh, things. So I have the import, which makes sense. I'm basically saying I want to import everything uh, as my imports, and it's coming from this bicep file. So basically what I'm saying is import all of the exported um, types and function definitions into this bicep file to be able to reuse them here as well. So now what I can do is if I declare a parameter, for example, a storage account configuration, I can point to my imports dot, which also allows you to have IntelliSense, uh, and point to the, uh, the def type definition in this case that I wanted to use. And the same thing applies also to functions. Uh, you might have expected that. So for example, you, I'm using an output here, and again, I'm pointing to my imports dot, and then the name of that function as well. So this allows you to export and import all of those type definitions and functions across different bicep files as well. Again, allowing you to have much more reusability for all of your templates. So with that, we have a couple of minutes left. Uh, let me uh, wrap it up to, uh, to talk about what we have seen, and I have a couple of call to actions for you as well. So we talked about four different aspects. We talked about local modules. Again, these are stored on your local file system. When should you use those? Ideally, if you are the only one, the only developer who's using this module. So still, you're able to extract pieces of code and put them into separate module files, but you are the only one who has access. The second one is that ACR, that Azure Container Registry. So this is you taking your existing module, publishing it into an Azure Container Registry, which allows you to provide access to others to reuse your module as well. The third one was Azure Vertified Modules. So again, these are managed and maintained by Microsoft, obviously read only, uh, but are based on the well-architected framework, secure by default, and you also get full support on that from Microsoft support. And lastly, we talked about extending that reusability. So using the export decorator that allows you to export this functionality for your own type definitions and function definitions, as well as that resource derived types, which allows you to reuse types that are already there uh, based on existing resources. So with that, I have a couple of our call to actions uh, for you. First of all, let's take advantage of the opportunity that we're all here uh, today. So let's connect, I'm happy to do that. I'll be here for the entire week. I'm also gonna be in the Azure Infra booth, which is right uh, in the back here, uh, this Wednesday for the entire morning. So if you wanna have additional questions, discussions, uh, happy, to, uh, happy to see you there. I also wanna highlight another breakout session, BRK196, which is happening today at 5.30 p.m., which is all going to be about that Azure verified module technology that I showed you. So if that is of interest uh, to you, definitely attend it. I will be there and hope to see you there as well. And lastly, in the beginning, I talked about that recipe. So I do want to mention that uh, the biggest recipe that I actually ever wrote uh, was, is the, the book on uh, biceps. So I said, thank you. I have a couple of books uh, to give away. Uh, and I have a lot of uh, bicep um, pins to give away on behalf of the product team uh, as well. So I do want to make sure that we leave room for the next presenter. So let's meet in a couple of minutes next to the stage here. If you're interested in getting started with bicep, I have a bicep uh, book for you as well as some, uh, some goodies. So with that, I want to thank you so much for attending. I hope you have uh, a great uh, conference. And uh, yeah, thank you for being here. Thanks.